So I'm continuously surprised how during this campaign, I'm getting the type of uh, a treatment, uh, the silencing, the the name calling, the the bu online bullying that really doesn't fit a democracy, but looks more like authoritarian, uh, military guerrilla style um, tactics of of intimidation. It's no wonder that regular folks uh, refuse to run or even voice their opinions here in South Florida when when they dare to be confronting the norm, the establishment, uh, mainstream political line. It's more than obvious that there is a reign a a, a political. Uh, uh, thought police out there and nobody is allowed to have an independent mindset it it's why my friends even suggest it don't even bother running uh, with one of the establishment parties just go as an independent because there is um, this barrier between um, regular folks you know penniless powerless vulnerable working class folks and the the powerful entities uh, that stay uh, stay up there they reign with uh, impunity and decide to uh, call up their friends, their uh, their powerful ally, the the establishment media, to uh, destroy reputations. And I didn't come to the United States while well, I was brought here. We didn't come here to be silenced, to be trampled on, and to be denied our political identity. It is very dangerous and disheartening, but it, I also feel emboldened and braver than ever to confront that which is wrong. Nobody should be denied their true ide uh, identity. And that is something that is continuously being applied to me. If I say that I am not a communist, I am not. You need to take my word for it because, hello, I'm homeschooled. I am more than used to not going with the trends. I will put on, I will wear, say, study, read, advocate for whatever I believe in because I was raised like that. When you're the daughter of a political prisoner, you don't think twice when voicing your independent thoughts. You're brave and you stand up for your principles. And in this debate, during this uh, nasty, low, and very uncivilized uh, war against my reputation, I can only say that those who have the moral high ground will persevere, will triumph, and will be the, the model for what kind of society we want to live in. Because it is very unfortunate that those who hold a high power, high positions in our society, sometimes even elected officials, would dare to participate in pitchfork mobs to try and silence, destroy a voice. And I am what I am. I am Yadira Escobar and I'm running for Congress because I know that there is beauty in everyone. We have a right to demand peace. We have a right to live in a society that judges you for what you are and not what uh, the propaganda is saying about you. We want to live in, in a United States where your opinion is not censored, where what you believe in is not trampled on. I, uh, in 2008, after 15 years of being a, an exile in Miami, having grown up without grandparents or anything, I just had my two parents to teach me Spanish. I think those two uh, taught me pretty well. Soy muy fluida en el español, gracias a mis padres. Um, and when we went back in 2008 to a new uh, grandfather, a grandfather who was a nationalist, yeah, Nationalist, not communist, totally different thing. Uh, my grandfather was a member of the 26th of July movement, and he was tortured. He had his toenails ripped off. He uh, and they they burnt cigarette butts on in the tone the the raw flesh. They uh, kicked him till most of his ribs were broken, and he was left on the side of the road to just die um, by R Batista's henchmen, because the urban faction of the 26th of July movement, which was mainly anti-communist. Um, they were against Batista, and many um, right-wing political figures in South Florida, like Manuel Artaim, uh, Uber Matos, Pedro Luis Boitel, they, they were members of the 26th of July movement, and many of these members were jailed, and, uh, and uh, that can't be denied. Truth, historical facts cannot be uh, 
pushed aside because of a need to stay in power and continue milking that that um, regime change uh, tactic, which has failed to produce any meaningful results in Cuba. Uh, since I was raised in South Florida and I <laughs> grew up among right wing uh, parties and clubs and backyard, uh, you know, barbecues and listen to these guys. Uh, I've heard very violent things and most of the hate is not oriented towards politics. It's towards the people. And I am against that. That is abusive. We cannot continue to punish people for their political ideas. Should the Cuban uh, people decide to overthrow the Cuban government, they should do that because of their free will. Not because we make them suffer hunger by denying to do business when, with them and uh, denying our uh, Floridian businessmen from doing business with them as well. Uh, I'm an advocate of free markets. I'm against uh, monopolies that try to then limit the free market. Um, I have said so on TV and I want Cuba to have access to free markets. Uh, but it doesn't matter what you are or what you believe or what you say. What you say because... There is a business in South Florida, and it has to do with regime change. And they will go after anybody who dares to have a, a free mind and does not bow down to their threats. This isn't about Republicans versus Democrats. This is about somebody from down here, down in the real world, somebody who's a vulnerable citizen and does not have a lawyer on speed dial, somebody who doesn't have a team of wealthy corporate donors backing her campaign, just honest um, donors, people, you know, real people, trying to ad push the policies that we believe are necessary to have a healthy, um, wholesome life in the United States. This is like the battleground. It's, it's ground zero of normal, regular candidates from the people pushing for, for change and having multi-millionaires try to destroy their reputations it's, it, it's why for the past um seven years i've had to do so many jobs with an alias I, i'll reveal one i've i've been a rachel why because it is real they will go after people they have killed activists they have disappeared people why because we're talking about business it's all about money they, these powerful entities don't care about uh, democracy in Cuba or respecting the sensibility of an immigrant community. No, we are talking about multi-million dollar fortunes that are in jeopardy if somebody like me goes to Washington and demands that American laws be respected because we have a federal entity down here in Florida continuously pushing war propaganda down American citizens' throats. It is illegal. I, I always put the example, imagine if PBS was um, was a spokesperson for a political party. It's not right, right? Because if you have an, uh, a, a, an entity that is funded by taxpayer dollars, they do not get to choose a political side. They need to serve um, the American people because they're being funded by the American people. And it is illegal to have something that was designed to create regime change in Cuba, a foreign country, have them transmit uh, locally and expose American citizens to a sort of narrative that is not based on facts. It is an emotional propaganda machine that only seeks one thing, to keep things in their place, to maintain the status quo, which is why I'm constantly reminding people that uh, Radio and TV Marti they need to stop buying um, paid programming in local channels. They need to stop transmitting through local uh, radio frequencies because they are not a, a private uh, news organization trying to um, inform us through uh, honest journalism. They push propaganda and they are connected with a political establishment. We can't have a federal entity sponsoring, in other words, certain candidates of a certain party and then buying airspace precisely on the stations or right-wing stations that then go on and, and, and say things that are untrue about me. Because as a federal candidate, I deserve to participate in a fair and honest election. 
And we're not having that right right now. We're we are witnessing firsthand what are the consequences of being uh, open minded, promoting um, things just like Elizabeth Warren, but unlike Elizabeth Warren, my my campaign is vulnerable. It's small. It's mostly run with volunteers, honest people that want a change in society and are looking out for the future generations so that they too can have an America that, that allows them to, to live up to their potential and live, live wholesome lives. Because these, um, these wonderful, they're worth their weight in gold, volunteers that are helping me out in my campaign, they graduated with a sum that they could pay off. They went to college and they could pay off their student uh, loan debts. And they recognize how difficult it is going to be for us millennials to live in a society that is controlled by such powerful forces that are just ignoring the fact that if we continue to have um, the, such grotesque levels of income and wealth inequality, the whole system will collapse. You can't just take and take and take for yourselves. Because we need money circulating. And right now, we're reaching a dire point in which everything is, is, is under threat. Because the, the basic pillars, the foundations of our society are under attack. What is out there is not true. And we see that my opponent, Mauro diaz Balart, is silent. He's conveniently staying quiet. Because it is his duty as my representative, I've been living here for like almost 20 years, it is his duty to demand that the violence and the, 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 the bullying and the targeting stop so that we can have a real and, and transparent and peaceful uh, debate so that people have, an, have a chance to see what I'm really for, who I really am. And it tells you a lot how in the face of all of this, this slander, all of this defamation, he is quiet. Why? Because he represents the establishment, everything that is wrong and that needs to change. We need to impose congressional term limits. We need to make sure that our voice as citizens is not trampled on the way it so often is around the rest of the world. How are we to hold the baton for global leadership if what we criticize in other nations happens here huh how uh, how can we uh continue to fight the, the the growing influence of china if if down here in florida and it happens everywhere it's not just in florida it's happening everywhere how can we continue to be the number one you know america first how can we be true leaders in the global stage, if somebody like me is essentially being denied the, the possibility because the, um, a spokesperson for the Democratic uh, Miami-Dade Democrats said that basically that they're disowning me. You didn't even reach out to me. You didn't even talk to me. How can um, a spokesperson for the Miami Democrats publicly say that she... Um, that they do not um, want to... are not going to allow me to run without even giving me a call. You don't know what I stand for. You don't know who I am. You don't know. You're being fooled, I would like to think, and not that you're in being an accomplice. You're being fooled by a private news organization. Anyways, I'm going to cut this short because it's almost going to be like, what, uh, 20 minutes or something? And I guess I should do more of these so we can, um, so I can actually voice my opinion and not have posts that I have from back from 2008 taken out of context. And one last note on that, I am more than glad that in 2008, after 15 years of, of being an exiled, a Cuban American exile here in South Florida, I am more than glad that we returned to my ill grandfather. He was dying, essentially. And that I had a chance to break the ice with him and essentially let him understand that I held no grudges, that I wasn't this grand, spoiled grandmother, uh, granddaughter that was coming in from some country that sanctions the civil popul uh, civilian population in Cuba because the sanctions do not hurt the, the governing elites. They only affect uh, the Cubans. Uh, I was happy and proud 
that he got to see that I valued his fight, his nationalist fight um, against Batista, who his government, uh, who who he who tortured him, and he gave me his final blessing. He blessed me, and as a religious person, that was very special. That was very important for me, because I think families come above before politics. Families before politics. Politics. Let's leave it aside. Let's have. If you're gonna have a Thanksgiving dinner, leave politics out. Just talk and be a normal human being, and realize that political fashions, you know, um, trends. They don't transcend. They're subject to an era, a, a region, a certain demographic. But family is that love is enduring. And when you feel love for somebody, you forgive their their political ideas. It's it's nothing. It's peanuts. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that I value you as a person, and I know that in your circumstances you did the right thing. So we have to keep our moral high ground, not let the haters get to us. Um, we're not going to sink to our level. We're not going to become intolerant. We are going to continue to believe that at the end of the day, uh, morality will have the last laugh. That good, honest people will be the ones to eventually take to the streets, get into Congress, and demand that we turn our ship around before it's too late. The planet needs us, future generations need it, America needs us, so that we put a stop to the rise in authoritarianism, and we have a society that values people and judges them for what they say, what their actions are, not what rumors say about them. Well, peace. Love y'all.